The joint partners of this critical new infrastructure project, XL Energy and Otter Tail Power, would like to welcome everyone to today's event, a groundbreaking ceremony for the CapEx 2020 Big Stone South to Brookings County 345 kilovolt transmission line. This 70 mile, $225 million project is what we're here today to celebrate and kick off. This transmission project is an example of XL Energy's commitment to South Dakota to ensure safe, affordable, and reliable electric service so that our customers and our communities, in fact, the state as a whole, can continue to grow and prosper. In 2004, several utilities, including Otter Tail and Excel, uh, launched the CapEx 2020 initiative. That was the beginning of a very unique partnership. This partnership has endured for over a decade, working together in planning, permitting, and construction of major electric transmission that's resulted in more than 800 miles of major high voltage electric transmission worth over $2 billion. This partnership is an unprecedented example of cooperation and has been uh, recognized nationally. So what does it take to build and permit a project of this size? Utilities have learned from past experiences that to be successful, the process needs to be transparent and you need to collaborate with impacted stakeholders. For this project, we put a strategy in place that focused on reaching out early and often in engaging local communities, public officials, state agencies, and landowners. CapEx 2020 put an emphasis on communicating and listening. We hosted open houses, we made presentations to local officials, and we sent out thousands of direct mail pieces to keep people informed. It's been mentioned, but to me this is so crucial. It goes without saying that most landowners probably aren't out there looking for a large power line to be placed on their property. It's always a touchy issue. But from the beginning of the planning stages of this project through the final siting of the towers, landowner concerns have arisen. To the great credit of Excel and Otter Tail, my observation from my viewpoint at the commission is that these two companies have gone out of their way to work very hard to address those concerns and alleviate any issues that might be out there. It's apparent to me that these companies understand the importance of the long-term partnership that they are forming with the farmers and ranchers that will host these towers on their projects. And for that most important and diligent work to the companies, I say thank you. I'd like to commend Excel and Otter Tail uh, for your cooperation and foresight and your undertaking this project because it is good for South Dakota and good for electric power users all over the Midwest. This 70 miles will run right through the Buffalo Ridge, uh, one of the richest uh, wind resources in America, certainly one of the best resources in South Dakota. And there would be many more wind projects in South Dakota today if there was transmission capacity to carry them to consumers, but there aren't. And so that's probably the biggest uh, obstruction to additional wind capacity addition in South Dakota is the inability to economically transmit that power. We're going to be an attractive place to do business because one of the things that businesses look for when they're, when they're going through the, the process, the analysis of trying to decide where they want to locate, energy, affordable, reliable energy is an enormous competitive edge. And that's why in, in the investments like the one that are being, that's being made today is so important, investing in our infrastructure to make it possible to move that energy to places where it's needed. This is 70 miles of over 800 miles in transmission investment that's going to occur as a result of CapEx 2020. And so this is exactly what we need to be doing and I want to thank uh, both the power companies for partnering up on this great venture. When I was in the legislature, I carried legislation that would help uh, establish some wind project entities here in South Dakota. And our biggest hang-up throughout the years is we've seen those uh, projects develop and be built and, and benefit our renewable energy supply is that we need a transmission. We need a transmission to get them to where the demands were and uh, this is going to help us complete it. It's been fun to follow the project as it's been built throughout Minnesota to see that it does end up 
on budget and on time it has been great. I've read the stories and even how this project was first dreamed about was with a handshake in a hallway. This win, this transmission is going to benefit this region by more than just transmission alone. It's going to be the catalyst for wind development. Most of you might not follow the MISO interconnection queue. I hope most of you don't, but those of you who do may have seen this spring the MISO interconnection queue literally explode for requests in South Dakota. Why? The announcement of this transmission line, its successful completion in the permitting process here in South Dakota, and a related tax reform package that passed the South Dakota legislature and it was signed this spring by the governor that reformed and reduced what are called the gross receipts taxes on wind farms here in South Dakota. That made South Dakota competitive again with all the neighbors and now we have a transmission outlet, um, a road to market for this vast resource we have in eastern South Dakota. It's going to make, it's going to uh, ensure that we have hundreds of new megawatts of new wind energy installations built here in eastern South Dakota somewhere between 2017 and 2020. It can't line that up perfectly, but in that time frame, it's going to make a huge economic impact here in eastern South Dakota.